This is a podcast where real doctors discuss fake medical emergencies. That means that unless your ex-fiance discovers that you've been faking your shellfish allergy because you hate her jambalaya, this podcast is not medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Hi, everybody. I'm Jackson Bain. I'm Johnny Kolosinski. You might remember me from such podcasts as Old Lang Seinfeld, A Year About Nothing. Uh, this is Hi Everybody, a Bad Medicine podcast. Every week we talk about what Hollywood gets right and wrong about medicine and how the body works. You can find this podcast online at Hi Everybody MD on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or at www.hieverybodymd.com. You can also call us, leave us a message, give us more ideas. Just let us know how we're doing at 1530-DOCTORB. That's 1530-D-O-C-T-O-R-B. The B stands for actually the title of this week's episode, Black Snake Home, from the show Happy Endings. Yeah, th- this is a show that I wasn't really aware of until Jackson brought it up, and I watched the pilot, which was certainly 22 minutes of television. It was not as good as the rest of the series. Yeah, and then I watched this this episode that we're covering, uh, and it grew on me a lot more. Yeah. Uh, and this is going to be a quick episode uh, because of the fact that Jackson worked like a dog last week. Yeah. At, like our last episode and like the title character of the last episode, I did work all Christmas and I was in, what was it, Bob spent his Christmas Eve in the hospital. That's kind of what I did. Mm-hmm. But this one I also picked because it marks the end of a bad year um, and the beginning of a new year uh, in this show where that, that was dubbed for this whole season, The Year of Penny. So basically what Happy Endings is, it's a show about six friends various stages of life but the whole pilot started off with two friends or two people getting married and then the girl alex leaves dave at the altar and they're all still friends but they're all kind of bad to each other but also kind of good to each other at the same time yeah my impression again it being the first time i watched the show Mm -hmm. was that it was if the characters from the league had to be on a major network yes i thought of it as Fast talking friends in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to describe it. A lot of pop culture jokes, um, not too dated, surprisingly, on a lot of Mm -hmm. stuff, but a lot of fast talking, a lot of pile ons. They definitely make fun of each other quite a bit, but it is a really, really good show that I wish more people got into. Yeah. And I was surprised doing, you know, my tiny bit of research for this tiny bit of episode we're doing this week uh produced by jonathan groff and the russo brothers from everything that's good the avengers most recently Mm -hmm. and also community Uh uh-huh so like big big name players in a show that did not get enough love i think when it was on and i think it was a product of being on abc when it was trying to be a little more friendly towards families and this Mm -hmm. is probably not the most family friendly show i would say yeah. But also really good. So how it starts off is um, the two that were supposed to get married last season but then left are Dave and Alex. So Dave is Zachary Knight from the show Flash Forward, which was like a failed ABC sci-fi show, I think, where they yeah, it was, the future. It, it was like two years post-Lost mm-hmm. starting. Yeah. And uh, it was a really – it was – a mystery box style show that like so many shows immediately after loss, they got one season and died. Yeah. It was trying to be the next loss, but mm-hmm. him was supposed to be married to her, which is Alex, who is Alicia or sorry, Alicia D- Cuthbert, who was in like girl next door, 24, all those other shows. Mm-hmm. Um, they're kind of doing their thing, having a nice seafood tower in bed, which probably the worst idea possible. Cause those things are not stable. Um, Mm -hmm. And then their friends jump in, Adam Pally, who plays Max, Damon Wayans Jr., who plays Brad. Um, They're kind of fiddling around with a knife. And then Penny, who's played by Casey Wilson, and Eliza Coop, who plays Jane, who's the one who's actually deathly allergic to seafood. And she's sitting the closest to the seafood tower. Yeah, and they've got the, uh, the knife that they're playing with that's the oyster shucking knife. Yes. And... And and then they've got the tower, the unstable tower of seafood. Yeah. 
I mean, luckily, they're not shucking the oyster in bed. Like, they're standing up. Mm -hmm. But Max shucks the oyster, um, kind of insulting everyone before doing that, saying the freshest way you're supposed to eat oyster is freshly shucked, misses, and then fully stabs Brad right in the leg. Mm -hmm. And that was a pretty quick hit, and I did not see that coming the first time I saw this. And I was laughing pretty hard. But then I realized the big complaint that I always have. Not enough, not blood. enough blood. Not and even. there was no blood. There was zero, zero blood. Zero blood, and there was a lot of yelling, and people were panicking. Like he was yelling that he got stabbed, but as Brad was falling over, he hits the uh, the tower mm-hmm. like a domino, basically, and then that nails his wife and covers her in all of the stuff. Right, and she's deathly allergic to shellfish. And I think we did yeah. a shellfish allergy. We did, yeah, with with, Hitch, with right? Nisha when we talked about Hitch. And he, she was pretty quick to react. And she, her symptoms were, I think she felt nauseous. And then she started feeling like her throat was closing. So yep. kind of going back through anaphylaxis again, it has to have two systems involved, right? So you either have a rash and or difficulty breathing and or some kind of GI complaint. Mm-hmm. So for her, she had the throat closing, which is like airway stuff. And then also the, the vomiting. Right. And that which makes everyone else vomit, which is mm-hmm. such a common thing to see in the emergency department. Like it is one of the funniest things to to listen is like when we have loud vomiters that kind of vomit so loud the entire department can hear. And then you walk next door and you're going you talk to someone who's kind of sensitive and they go, What's going on next door? And I said, Oh, it's just a loud vomiter. And the first thing they go is, Their vomiting makes me want to vomit, and then they start retching. And then you get the, like, Carol of the Bells sort of situation. Yes. Instead of, like, bells and pleasant singing, it's just uh, nonstop. Just constant overacting, vomiting, retching sounds. And when all of them started piling on with the vomiting, I could not stop giggling on that part. And I think that's mm-hmm. probably a reason why we keep doing that in real life, too. Um, with the, the over-dramatized vomiting noise that I haven't really done on this podcast, but definitely in real life do it a lot (laughs) (laughs) thanks happy endings yeah uh so so that's that's strike one yes and so she's in shock and brad is brad is stabbed in the leg yes and so they've got these two situations that they have to solve yep number one being knife in the in the leg which max brings up later in the episode and says i thought there'd be more blood see he understands. He gets it. He, he listens it. to this podcast that didn't exist when, exactly. when this show was on the air. That's why I love Adam Pally. And meanwhile, dealing with Jane's allergic reaction. Correct. Uh, they deal with Max by, uh, or sorry, they deal with Brad by pulling out the knife. Well, even before that part, they were yelling a lot. And then they call out uh, Dave for not being really allergic as well. Mm-hmm. So then he starts panicking as well and slowing everything down on top because of that. Because he's faking the because he faked an allergy. Correct, because his uh then fiance makes horrible jambalaya. Which has peanut butter in it. Which has peanut butter in it. <laughs> this is this is a lot happening. This is mind you, the first minute of this episode. Mm-hmm. All of this. This is one minute of TV. Um and then Jane's calling for her EpiPen as well. But no but Alex doesn't know how to use it because she's panicking. Mm-hmm. everyone's panicking a lot except for Penny because it is her year. Mm-hmm. But as you were mentioning before, they deal with the knife in the leg mm-hmm. uh, by yanking it out immediately. Which would probably, you would want to leave it in, as we've covered many times. Yes. You definitely want to leave it in because you don't know if it's holding a vessel closed. Mm-hmm. But you can also cause more damage. And also, that's a dirty knife. There's so much stuff in it. At least one oyster's worth of germs. Yeah. And you don't want that. You don't want raw shellfish in your veins, even if you're not allergic. Correct. I mean, I'm trying to remember what the bad bacteria is in oysters that can actually cause like shenanigans on you. It's called Vibrio, and it causes cholera-like symptoms. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You can get, um, you know, you're vomiting your diarrhea, but you can also get necrotizing fasciitis, which is also bad as well. So 
that's a fancy term for the skin eating bacteria or the flesh eating bacteria. Mm -hmm. So you don't want that either. And then you can also get sepsis and then uh, get shock and die. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Brad was pretty screwed there. Yeah. (laughs) Meanwhile, Jane is rapidly going into anaphylactic shock, but they get the EpiPen onto her in time. Yes, but did you notice anything wrong with that scene? I did when I was texting with my doctor friend who I do a podcast with. (laughs) uh, Who mentioned that an EpiPen, and this is something I didn't know, needs Mm. to be applied for uh, at least 10 seconds. 10 seconds. I know, and it seems like an an eternity. Mm -hmm. But um, you actually have to stab and hold the needle into the skin for 10 seconds for all the... To ensure that all of the epinephrine comes out of the EpiPen into your leg. And that's the act- thing that I think I knew at one point in time when I was actually like doing after school camps and things mm-hmm. like that and regularly getting first aid training, but I haven't gotten that in almost a decade, more than a decade. If you want to watch like how it comes out, there's actually videos of people um, using their EpiPen or like other brand name auto injectors and pl- plunging it into a box. And it does take a couple seconds for all of the medicine to shoot out. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing to know about EpiPens, this might be the closest thing I've done to giving medical advice, is it goes through genes. I mean, it's not an issue for any of the people here in in the scene, but you can actually stab straight through genes and it'll still get you. Wow. But you have to hold it for 10 seconds. So when Penny stabbed and then released and then ran off, that's not nearly enough time. Okay. And it takes some effort to, you know, get the thing to click out. I know this because we used to fence with EpiPen trainers. I Yeah, uh, EpiPen trainers are awesome. Yes. Everyone should have 15 of them and stab their friends with them. It's really fun because it's kind of like fencing. And, like, you know, with fencing, if you touch their helmet, it lights up. The only way you know it worked is that the little plunger goes off. Yeah. And then you feel real good about yourself because you stab someone. I mean, and save their life and save their life. Yes, that is an important final sentence to add to that. Usually, if you have to give someone an EpiPen, you're pretty much going to have to go to the hospital right away, Mm -hmm. Um, mainly because you can have what they call a biphasic reaction, which means um, you cure it and then it comes back worse sometimes. So you need to go to the hospital, get monitored and all that stuff, too. So that pretty much ruined their whole vacation. You're not going to plop down and watch Lincoln Lawyer (laughs) like they did. Because the intros were fun. Question about had the scene been a little different? Mm-hmm. What if it had been Jane who was stabbed with the oyster knife? She's boned. <laughs> okay. I mean, she'll she'll still have an anaphylactic reaction and all that stuff too. But realize that she would continue to have an allergic response if the chunk of shellfish was still in her. Okay. So if there was... For some reason, when they shuck the oyster, they also use the oyster knife to clear out the oyster from its shell and then got a piece of oyster on said shell and then got stabbed. That could cause an issue if the she was injected with oyster. Okay. More or less. In addition to all of the germs that were okay. on it before. And then, you know, the, the knife probably was used for other stuff there too. Mm-hmm. But I would say the EpiPen would be a good band-aid it is not the definitive cure they're right. going to have to clean out that wound really really well to make sure there's no bits of seafood left behind okay yeah no seafood left behind is our 2021 slogan <laughs> except for not for jackson because he is also allergic to shellfish i'll leave all the seafood behind thank you very much <laughs> um what did you feel about uh max getting doused with ice water when he was freaking out Like it was a trope. It is. It's a pretty big trope, I would say. It's effective. It is. I mean, it'll snap you out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, It'll also snap out people who are in SVT, kind of like what we mentioned on the Resident episode. So Mm -hmm. I think that can that's part of the reason why people kind of use it a lot, too, is it does kind of cure when your heart rate's going really quick in certain situations. But it also is such a shock. You can't really panic about anything else other than being doused with Cold and wet. Yeah. Uh, I probably would have avoid tried to just hit that direction towards Max and not towards Jane, who's already having problems breathing. She probably mm-hmm. wouldn't appreciate that as much. But yeah, 
This was, again, the most chaotic two minutes of television on a sitcom that I've seen for a long time. And that's kind of why I wanted to cover it as a yeah, short it's, episode. It, it's, it's up there with the end of the Community Multiple Timelines episode. Oh, God. That one was a mess, too. We should do Community. I can't think yeah. of an episode of Community, though. I'll figure something out. If you if you know one, please call us at 530-DOCTOR or tweet us. Yeah. Ken Jong, give us a call. Tell us what you think. I'll t- gladly. Um, but yeah, a short episode. Um, just like minor things for the rest of it was uh, Jane, who tried to appease both of her friends by doing all the horrible hobbies they had, looked appropriately beaten up. Yeah. Because she got hit in the head with a Frisbee, Frisbee golf disc. She got caught in a fire in an apartment. Mm-hmm. And then there was some other horrible thing. I mean, she also got mentally scarred, too, by listening to Love to the Power of Love. Or love divided by love to the power of love is love times love. Yeah. It was That was great. That that I was loved, a thing. I love I love that song. It was it was beautiful. So so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Don't even know where I was going with that one. <laughs> Cause that song leaves you speechless. Oh. No one ever calls it Frolf. Do they? It's disc golf. Is it? Yeah. I mean, if Greg was here, he probably would argue. No, no, he'd he, say disc golf. He's an avid disc golfer. He should know. Yeah, but he, not an avid frolfer. No. I mean, one of the most random fact, the most popular disc golf courses in America is in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Which that field apparently is not that great, but apparently everyone wants to play at it. Morley Field. Yeah. And one thing that you noted as we were pre-discussing was about three quarters of the way through the episode, and Jane try Alex tries to give Jane jambalaya. Yeah, her fresh batch of extra peanut butter jambalaya. Why would you offer your own sister, who you know is allergic to seafood, a bowl of, as someone described it, hot seafood soup? Yeah, I love jambalaya. Ugh. I mean, again, visual media or sorry, audio medium can't see my face. I but I, yeah, I he looks like a guy who's allergic to seafood. I scrunched real hard. Yeah, uh, I think is it really? Ju- is it just seafood soup? Isn't there like a non uh, rice, uh, rice, uh, and sausage generally, like andouille sausage? Okay, I can do that as long as I don't make it with seafood stock, and then maybe with chicken. I'm down mm-hmm. for that, but. Not peanut butter and not all the rest of the seafood in it. I would I would feel like Dave. Just yeah. get that away from me. No, thank you. Pass. So, quick question for our quick episode. Mm-hmm. The human centipede builds itself as 100% medically accurate. If that's the case, how medically accurate is season two, episode one of the sitcom Happy Endings entitled Black's Snake Home? Okay, I really like this show. This scene was not super medically accurate, but it's not as like egregious as other things of, that we've watched, like Lucy or anything like that. I don't think anything could ever be as egregious as Lucy, to be honest. Um, Except for Crank 2, which was more egregious than Lucy. You're right. I forgot But that. Lucy was actively painful and egregious. Yeah, I think... So the things that are going against it is just... The stabbing and all that stuff, but it's still more accurate than the human centipede because there's still a, an adequately realistic portrayal of anaphylaxis and all that too. So probably one twenty. Okay. Opinion. Yeah. It's really I, the more we've done this podcast, the more I realize the it's nicer really, we, we're getting. Yeah. That, but also it's really hard for something to be as accurate as the human centipede. You know, you mm-hmm. can't find that sweet, sweet spot that says, you know what? You're just as accurate as us sewing or someone sewing buttholes to mouths and yeah. then forming a full chain. Just it's just really hard. Yeah. Very hard. They, it, it's that sweet spot of taking yourself absolutely seriously and recognizing that you're making a movie about sewing butts to faces. Correct. And if we ever have to cover Human Centipede 2... I'm I, sick that day. I quit. Yeah. 
That one is actually subtitled 100% medically inaccurate. So Right. So we might actually go negative on a day we cover that. Or it might be more medically accurate than the first one. I've seen parts of it. It's not. It, okay. It really is not. It's horrible. Like, I know the first one, we we kid and say it's horrible and all that stuff. It, the second one makes it just look like Citizen's Kane. Or Citizen's Kane. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Citizen's Kane is actually the little-known sequel to Citizen Kane. Citizen's Kane, back in the habit. No. Come on. It's Citizen's Kane lost in New York. Citizens Kane Electric Boogaloo. I mean, that's why they have the cane from Citizens Kane in Planet Hollywood. <laughs> that it's a fact. <laughs> Everyone knows this. It's there. But yeah. Um, how am I gonna make this more accurate is probably the next question. And to be yep. honest, uh more blood. More blood? More blood. Ten I mean, seconds more the, the epi pen? Fa- yes. The fact that um Max brought it up later in the episode tells you that they even knew Probably should have been more blood. Yeah. I, I wonder if that was a note that they got was th- they had. Originally wanted like more blood. Like Reservoir Dogs level of blood in, in the first scene and someone raised their hand and said, pardon me, we're ABC. Yeah. I mean, I would have really appreciated that. But this is a type of show that would make fun of themselves for not having enough blood. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I appreciate that quite a bit. This is probably the first time a show self-corrected itself in the same show. Yeah. Yeah. Watch, just watch Happy Endings. Just uh, skip the first two episodes. You don't need that as much, but definitely the rest of them. And then you're going to feel really bad that there's only three seasons and you want more. Yeah. That's how I feel. I, it. I, it'll probably, my wife and I are doing a watch through of Bob's Burgers, which we've never done fully before. And uh, once that's done in 2023, <laughs> um, maybe we'll give Happy Endings a full shot. You're probably going to finish it before the Bob's Burgers movie comes out. There's a Bob's Burgers movie? There is a planned Bob's Burgers movie, I think, coming out either this coming year or the following year. That's fantastic. So, yes. They're going the way of The Simpsons, basically, where if a cartoon has been on on the air for long enough, it's going to get a movie. Which I'm Approved. excited about. I'm actually pretty excited about it. It's going to be good. Yeah. But I think this was a good way to end our year. Mm-hmm. It has been a very long year. It has. But we are very appreciative of all the people that listened and made us a part of your horribly horrible year. Yeah. And hopefully things will get better in 2021 as more of us get stabbed in the arm and uh, get a little closer to being able to close to normal. Yes. I already have been stabbed in the arm. I felt a little or I felt pretty sore, um, but I recovered after I'd say about 36 to 48 hours. Um, so it's not that bad. I'm not a zombie. There's no microchip left behind. I have yet to be stabbed because affer- apparently pop culture medical podcaster isn't quite as close to the front lines as emergency room pediatrician. Yes. So or, I, I'm or a little hosp- behind the Jackson in the line. Or hospital administrator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But again, thanks for all. Thanks all for listening. Yep. Thanks for listening. If you do get stabbed in the arm, uh, poked in the arm, feel free to tag Hi Everybody MD in your vaccine photos. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks. And we will be back next year, next week, uh, with our planned New Year's Evil episode uh, with Dr. Greg Winter. Yep. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye folks. <laughs>